bin scales are probably a big, big tool for a couple reasons. One, because it lets us know when pigs aren't eating and probably more importantly helps us keep pigs in front of feed in some, in some instances. Um, you know, also some of the, the sound technology of listening for cough and some of that's, you know, became more available. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name's Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me for part two in our two-part series on managing wean to finish mortality is Dr. Levi Johnson. Dr. Johnson is a consulting veterinarian with the Swine Veterinary uh, Center in St. Peter, Minnesota. Uh, Levi, uh, you helped us to start to understand wean to finish mortality in the first part of our two-part series here. Why don't you help us dive back into this topic of finishing mortality, the big picture that we've got to make it better and, and what we're doing to make that better. Levi, the floor is yours. So PERS is a, a very important part of it, but it seems like there's more, more at play too. And I think uh, what, what everybody understands and what's easy to talk through is just basic husbandry, choring barns, servicing, uh, finishing barns. And it's very self-explanatory, um, you know, to a lot of us, it's feed and air and water. But, but the reality is we don't, we don't execute that as well as, as we need to Clayton. And, you know, the feed outages that, that realistically occur is still more than they should be. And, and just keeping an eye on the pig and listening to the pig, if they get sick or cold, um, one paradigm that that's probably hurt finishing a lot for a long time is that everybody knows and recognizes that that should be a, that should be an easier, less hands-on phase of production than nursery. And so in veterinarians, and I'm just as guilty of that too, but we like to focus a lot of effort and time on, on nursery pigs because that's, that's a more critical animal typically. And, uh, and so we focus a lot of our efforts, you know, on the nursery production, which is, is rightfully so we can impact mortality on that turn and, and make a lot of difference. But sometimes a unintended side effect of that is that we're just not getting in, in finishing barns enough. And I'm, I'm speaking for veterinarians. I'm speaking for, um, just service staff and producers, you know, do we really have an, our eye on the ball as well as we should on these pigs that are worth the most money that we've invested the most money in? And then finally, uh, you know, the, the very last step of the piece of the puzzle, just on marketing on, you know, animal handling and, um, getting the right pig out the door and, and all of those, those types of things too. So I think, I think that's a lot of um, a lot of the opportunity, honestly, is just making a, a concerted effort and sometimes the investment in, in people to to keep looking at that finishing pig and finding opportunities because because I promise you they're there. Um, they're there for, I think, everybody at, at some level. And so that's, uh, you know, from a high level, I think that's that's just things we need to, to keep um, getting in those finishing barns and keep, uh, you know, working on day-to-day -day things. At Essential Ag, pork production is our life. We understand the real-world challenges producers face, and that is why we strive to bring research-driven solutions to the industry. The team at Essential Ag is working hard every day to find and deliver innovative technologies to you because we are passionate about solving your problems. We live in a world of very limited resources, unfortunately, you know, vet time, service people time, you know, to, I totally agree with what you're saying. More time in those finishers is warranted. Um, have you seen anything, Levi, technology wise that allows for kind of remote monitoring, for lack of a better term, to try and help identify in those finishers, you know, when you're not there, is a, is, have you seen anything with controller systems or, you know, uh, uh, bin scales, stuff like that, to give you feedback about what's happening in the barn, cameras, 
um, you know, even when you're not physically there. Anybody do anything unique there that you think is worth highlighting? Yeah, there's definitely um, like the ones that you'd mentioned, bin scales, I think, are bin scales are probably a big, big tool for a couple reasons. One, because it lets us know when pigs aren't eating and probably more importantly, helps us keep pigs in front of feed in some in some instances. Um, you know, also some of the the sound technology of listening for cough and some of that's, you know, became more available. Um, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of kind of fancy stuff out there that, that really helps us. Um, but at the same token, there's a lot of really, I mean, just really basic technology that, that goes a long way in, in finishing barns. And so a lot of, a lot of the really important technology are, are super basic, basic technology, like reporting mortality and reporting mortality events timely. Um, as an example, uh, living through, um, a couple of the, of the APP breaks that happened in Iowa, mm -hmm. the, the value of a, of timely, uh, timely reporting of a mortality event was the difference between, you know, truckloads of pigs that might've lost in that acute disease outbreak in the, in the APP, um, serotype 15 breaks that, that occurred there. Um, and that, that's a drastic example, but mortality, um, mortality documentation and reporting, water usage documentation and reporting. And now with some of our systems where we can remotely, <coughs> excuse me, now with some of our systems where we can remotely look at water consumption on say a Maximus or an Edge, uh, that gives us more, more opportunities for, for different people to be able to catch that. Um, and I think there's some opportunity to make sure we do capitalize on, on some of what we own in, in barns, cause we can really find a lot of things on, on water consumption and, and practicing in Iowa and Minnesota. Um, one thing that I talked to producers about and probably will be nonstop for the next six months is, are we, are we really paying attention to those low temperatures? So you think about the ventilation set up in a, in a barn, a finish, it doesn't matter what kind of barn it is. We're very regulated on the low temperature on when our heaters turn on and what temperature the, the very coldest um, part of the day that barn will get. And, and there's a lot of opportunity and, and just having the people on the, on the slat, the people that are seeing pigs every day, having them aware of what, what are the ditches on high, low temperatures, especially that low one. Mm -hmm. How many times, you know, do you go into a, a finishing barn and you see low temperatures that are, you don't even walk in the barn and you know that something was wrong. The heater didn't work or the curtain was down or something. Um, you know, so that's really the technology that, um, that I see that, that we really need to use more is a lot of it. A lot of it's in front of us that, that we just need to keep using. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your boring or Ingelheim representative to learn more. Yep. And, uh, you know, we're recording that information all the time. So simple text message, phone call, email, right? There's lots of different ways we can communicate that information back and forth without necessarily making it a big investment that we haven't already made. Yep. Yep. And I guess one other, one other thing I'd, I'd add on the, on the finishing mortality um, front that's that's really important is how we how we care for sick pigs and we can really make a lot of difference um, again just basic things paying attention to comfort do we need to raise a set point because they're they're fevering from purrs or flu um, things that we probably work with routinely in nurseries that that sometimes sometimes get lost in translation and, and finishing for, for all the reasons that we've talked about and constraints that 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 we have as, as producers, but, um, just simple things like, um, getting pigs up 
you know, more times a day, kind of treating that sick finishing pig a little bit like a, like an early nursery pig is, is mm -hmm. a comparison I use quite a bit. And, uh, that can, you know, that can make a difference between, uh, minimal mortality or, or mortality really, really going off the, off the rails. The thing that we have in our, as our, as an advantage in the finishing phase is that's a pig that is, is a little easier to recover. They can rebound pretty well if we give them, if we give them the right tools and environment and feed and ventilation, uh, oftentimes that we can get that pig to, to turn around if we just uh, do our part and let them go. That's good stuff. Um, you know, don't be discouraged. Hang in there and, and take care of the pig's needs, whatever they happen to be. A little bit of TLC goes a long way. Absolutely. Thanks, Levi. I really appreciate you coming on the show. And to our audience, thank you very much for listening to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinehealthblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on our next episode. For Dr. Levi Johnson, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thanks for joining us and have a great rest of your week. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H E L L O at W I S E N E T I X dot com.